Greetings, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and welcome to the Asia and Pacific Regional and Technical Meeting on Education for Sustainable Development. Uh, my name is Mark Manns uh, from UNESCO Bangkok, uh, and I'll be your host through, through this event today. Um, just to start off with a few announcements. Uh, number one, uh, we will not uh, be enabling a, a lot of participation from the audience except for chat and Q&A functions. So please do write comments and questions into the chat and Q&A functions below. And we'll be pulling out comments and questions for speakers and panelists uh, throughout the entire event. Uh, if posing a question or comment, we would like to know who you are exactly. So please uh, feel free to put your name, your organization in association with, with your question or comment. So we can uh, either directly respond to that or possibly get back to you in the, in the future. Interpretation is available in Russian. So you can find the interpretation button at the bottom right of your screen. Uh, please feel free to, to change and select that if you need Russian interpretation. This meeting is being recorded. Next slide. Just a quick overview of today's program. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll start uh, with uh, some welcome remarks, opening remarks from my colleague, uh, Mr. Nini Tang from UNESCO Bangkok. Then we'll have a short panel session uh, looking at uh, some of the ESD initiatives that have been taking place uh, in the past, present, and future. Uh, and we'll have two, two uh, panelists from Japan and uh, Indonesia joining us to, to share their experiences. Then we'll talk a little bit more about the ESD for 2030 roadmap. And the second panel session, we'll have uh, three panelists uh, from Kyrgyzstan, Maldives, and Mongolia to talk about their upcoming ESD for 2030 country initiatives. And then we'll close it out with a little uh, discussion on, on how to move forward as a country in the country initiatives uh, before we close today. So thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to turn the floor to Mr. Nini Tang, who is the Chief AI of the Section for Inclusive Quality Education at UNESCO Bangkok. Nini, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Uh, here, I would like to make an opening remark for that, for this Asia and the Pacific Regional Technical Meeting on ESD for 2030. Uh, dear participants, colleagues and guests, good afternoon to you all from Bangkok. It is a great pleasure to welcome you all to this Asia Pacific Regional Technical Meeting on ESD for 2030. On behalf of UNESCO, I would like to thank all of you for joining us for this important occasions. The COVID-19 pandemic that continue to disrupt our life is a wake-up call on how human health is inextricably linked with the health of our planet. Environmental challenges are intricately intertwined with every aspect of our society, including our social, economics, and cultural systems. Therefore, we must act now and together toward a sustainable futures. Education for Sustainable Development, we call it ESD, has the vision of allowing everyone to acquire the knowledge, skill, attitudes, and the value necessary to shape a sustainable futures. The international commitment on ESD, the intended with the global citizen, Shared education, it recognized in our SDG target 4.7, which nurture learners with cross-cutting competency to take action toward inclusive growth and peaceful coexistence. Target 4.7 states, by 2030, ensure that all learners acquire knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development. Last week, the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development was held from 17 to 19 May with support of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research of Germany. At the end of the virtual meeting, over 80 ministers and vice ministers and the 2000 education and environment stakeholders committed to taking concrete steps to transform learning for the survival of our planet by adopting the Berlin Declaration on ESD. Participants committed to ensure that ESD is a fundamental element for education system at every level with environmental and climate action as a core curriculum components. The Berlin Declaration outlined a range of the policy to transform learning encompassing teaching, learning, 
professional training and civic engagement. It is also highlights the need to implement ESD with joint emphasis on cognitive skills, social and emotional learning, and action competency. The adoption of this declaration will create momentum for implementation of ESD for 2030 roadmaps, the framework for this decade of education for sustainable development. We see that many member states in the Asia in the Pacific region have joined this momentum by submitting your ministerial statement at the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. We thank all of you for your strong commitments and dedication, and we would like to further strengthen our collective effort in fulfilling SDG 4.7 through regional technical meetings. There are considerable effort and progress in Asia and the Pacific region in terms of mainstreaming and integrating ESD in education policies. However, gaps between government initial policy commitment and the implementation remain with a lack of the relevant education and pedagogical initiative to provide technical, financial, and human resources to promote ESD principle. So today, we are here to take stock of the achievement, lesson learned, available resource and partner related to ESD in the region to review the region specific needs and approach for ESD for 2030 to discuss challenge and a concrete implementation plans for the new framework, including country initiated on ESD at the regional and national <coughs> levels for the period of 2020 to 2030. We are pleased to share, have a representative from the Japan, Indonesia, Kyrgyzstan, Maldives, and Mongolia join us today to share their experience and their plan for ESD for 2030 initiated. So moving forward, we need very, every UNESCO member state to create a network of actors who together can implement the, this ambitious vision of education and to ensure environmental education is a core curriculum component in all level of learning by 2025. So UNESCO is committed to provide technical guidance to the member states on the way forward fulfilling target 4.7 in view of regional and national context. With this, we look forward to have a fruitful discussion today your input is essentially identifying the strengths, challenge, and opportunity involved in this implementation on ESD. Once again, thank you for your, and looking forward to having your active participation. So, Mark, over to you. Sorry, thank you very much, Nini. Yeah. Uh, much appreciated for that, for that welcome. Now let's move on to the next session. And I'd like to call on our colleague, uh, Dr. Mi Young Che from UNESCO Jakarta, education specialist, uh, to moderate the next session, uh, looking at some past, present and future ESD initiatives. Uh, and she will introduce our two guest speakers. Uh, Mi Young, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, keep panels respectable participants, UNESCO colleagues, and the ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to welcome everyone to this session on the past, the present, and the future of ESD in Asia and the Pacific. My name is Mi Young Choi from UNESCO Jakarta Office, and it is my honor to moderate this session. Uh, today, we have two panels of, uh, for this uh, session. Mr. Yoshi Aki Ishida from the Minister of Education, Culture, Sport, Science and Technology in Japan, and uh, Mr. Ananto Guzma Seta from the National Commission for UNESCO in Indonesia. Uh, as you know, we have a limited given time for this session over the next uh, 20 minutes. So Ishida Sensei, Papa Ananto, Please give yep. your presentation time, not more than seven minutes for oh, their okay. Q&A time. Once we have uh, finished the presentation, I will <laughs> check the time with my uh, mobile phone. Anyway, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you have uh, any questions and the uh, uh, two panels of presentations, please write it down yours in the Q&A chat function, as uh, Mark mentioned it. Uh, my colleague in Bangkok, Sayaka, will deliver them to us once the two presentations have finished. Then please allow me to jump into this uh, session floor. 
Firstly, please let me introduce the first uh, uh, panel, Mr. Yoshiaki Ishida. He's the director for the International Strategic Planning of MEX in Japan since 2020. He will also serve as the Deputy Secretary General of the National Commission for UNESCO in Japan. He has been working in the various fields of education and culture in the ministry more than 20 years uh, since his career started at the Ministry of Education of Japan in 1999. Uh, and then I'm very glad that he was our uh, former colleague because he was working at headquarters education sector in Paris uh, and was appointed since uh, uh, the 2004 and for two years. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Yoshiaki Ishida. Ishida-sensei, dojo yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Floor is yours. Hello, uh, good afternoon uh, and good morning. Uh, can you hear me clearly? Oh, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, kind introduction. Uh, I'm Yoshiaki Shida from Japan. Uh, first of all, I would like to extend my heartfelt uh, congratulations to the success of the World Conference on ESD held last week. And I thank UNESCO Bangkok office to give me this opportunity to share our experiences to promote ESD in Japan. Uh, next uh, slide, please. I would like to uh, just look back uh, connection on Japan and ESD first. Uh, Japan has been actively implementing ESD nationally since 2005 when UN dec decade of ESD started started. Also, Japan has been working together with the UNESCO Secretariat for leading global promotion on ESD through Japanese funding trust contribution. One of the milestones of our ESD activities during the DESD period is hosting the UNESCO World Conference on ESD held in Aichi, Nagoya and Okayama City in 2014 for celebration of the success of the DESD, as well as the launch of GAP on ESD. And during the GAP implementation period, prior to the termination of the GAP on ESD, Japan, together with 46 member states, has proposed to launch the post-GAP framework on ESD on the occasion of UNESCO Executive Board in 2018. Upon the uh, adaptation of its proposal by the Executive Board, building on the series of consultations by member states and multi stakeholders on ESD, the resolution on ESD for 2030 was officially adopted in the UNESCO General Conference and UN General Assembly in 2019. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this slide uh, presents the summary of draft of the National ESD Implementation Plan of Japan. Uh, following the uh, launch of ESD for 2030, one of our ongoing efforts is the revision of National ESD Implementation Plan. Since ESD has been one of the top priorities of the government of Japan, we already have ESD implementation plan, which has been issued in 2006 by the Interministerial Liaison Committee on ESD, uh, which consists of more than 10 ministries, including the Cabinet Office, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Environment, Ministry of Agriculture, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and so on. The national ESD plan has been revised according to the each global framework on ESD. And we now preparing for the launch of the next version of our national plan, which aligns with the ESD for 2030 roadmap. The first draft of the next implementation plan was prepared based on the discussion on the ESD round table. Uh, the the roundtable is a kind of expert group 
and it is consisted of various stakeholders on ESD, including researchers, civil societies such as ESDJ, local governments, teachers, and youth, incorporating their various and diverse ideas on how to implement ESD for 2030 in Japan. We are now the final stage of revision of the plan, the, and it will be launched in the end of this month, in, in one week, hopefully. Uh, the upcoming national implementation plan will have new features based on the framework on ESD for 2030, namely clarifying the idea that ESD contributes to achieve all ESDG goals for the first time, and focusing on the strengthening the new network with multi stakeholders. The national implementation plan also includes a series of concrete actions to be taken by each stakeholder under five priority action areas of ESD for 2030, and will be followed up in regular basis. I would like to add an explanation that this plan will also to take the role as a country in charge of ESD for 2030 in Japan. Next slide, please. So this slide shows uh, ESD practices, but uh, before introducing a specific ESD practice with this slide, I would like to explain how Japan could promote and mainstream ESD as a core idea in school education system. We have a strong belief from the very first stage of ESD that transformation of school education system is a key to achieve the purpose of ESD. Also, we believe that school curricula would be the most influential tool to realize the mainstreaming ESD into the school education system. In this connection, we have connect, uh, continued a uh, series of persistent internal discussion within the ministry. And finally, the core idea of ESD, which is expressed as fostering builders of sustainable society, was incorporated into the preamble and the general rules that pertain to, uh, pertain to overall content of the new national curriculum standards for primary and secondary schools. According to the incorporation to the new national curriculum standards, every school education has been conducted based on the philosophy of ESD nationwide. In addition to the school curricula, one of our success at the school level was to promote ESD together with UNESCO Associated School Network. Based on the proposal by Japanese National Commission, we have uh, positioned ASP Net Schools as a center for promotion of ESD. Thanks to these joint efforts to promote both programs, there are uh, uh, more than 1,000 ASP.NET schools in Japan, and the ASP.NET schools are uh, providing good ESD practices to other schools. Based on these uh, features in Japan, I would like to introduce one of the case study of whole school approach at the Tadami Junior High School. Uh, this school is public junior high school located in a mountainous area far from uh, the sea. And usually the students do not have opportunities to think about the ocean environment. And for this reason, this school implemented education on ocean science and environment. With the experience of picking up plastic garbage on the beach, students could understand these plastic garbage issues were connect connected to another environment issues like heavy rain and flood damage in the daily life and started to tackle with how they could be involved in problem solving. As a result, they had an idea of making shopping bags with newspapers instead of plastic bags and disseminated the activities to the community. Moreover, the students made the SDGs color wheels for awareness raising by using beech trees in the rich nature of the school area, which is also designated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve. This project can be related to several issues, ocean disaster mitigation, climate change, environmental international understanding, sustainable production, and consumption. And it is a good example 
of synergy, which is related to the several SDGs goal. And the pie chart at the bottom uh, is a result of impact survey on the result of ESD practice. It tells us that among the three key comp um, competencies that ESD aims for, motivation, attitude, and critical thinking ability are more recognized than getting knowledge and skills. The bar graph shows a most changed perspective for a sustainable society. Next slide, three, please. Uh, with the last slide, I would like to uh, share our another ongoing effort to support school teachers implement, uh, implementing ESD in classrooms. Our ministry has developed a guide to, to promoting ESD, aiming at providing practical guidance to school teachers. First edition was issued in 2016, and now we are, we are also final final stage of revising the guide in line with the new framework of the ESD for 2030, which will be finalized and issued very soon. Last, uh, not, uh, but not least, as affirmed by the UN, uh, UN General Assembly resolutions, ESD definitely contributes to achieve all of the SDG goals beyond goal four through fostering builders of a sustainable society who could act for solution of global common issues. We believe that education is a key enabler to change people and society and eventually change the world. We hereby commit to commit and continue promoting ESD, including providing support to the global community as a one of the leading country of ESD. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Yoshiaki Ishida. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, let me move on to the next panel. Uh, please let me invite the next presenter, Mr. Anantyo Kusma Seta. He has been the national coordinator for ESD at the National Commission for UNESCO in Indonesia since 2015, up to present. Prior to his uh, current position, Babak Anato was the Director of Planning and the International Cooperation and a Senior Advisor for the Innovation and the Competitiveness at the Minister of Education and Culture in Indonesia. Uh, he was also the Secretary of the National Commission for UNESCO and uh, having uh, academic background as a lecturer of Jakarta State University. Uh, to take this chance, I would like to convey UNESCO Jakarta Office a sincere thanks for all your strong and continuing support. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Ananto Guzma Seta. Papa, be yeah. very silakan. Yeah. <laughs> Floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, Mei Yang. Thank you, moderator. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks to UNESCO Banco Office, which has given Indonesia an opportunity as one of the panelists in this important uh, meeting. Can you move to the next slide, please? Uh, first of all, please allow me to share some examples on how five priority action areas has been implemented in Indonesia. Or the advancing policy, at the regional level, as a member of ASEAN countries, in 2019, Indonesia has signed Bangkok declarations on advancing partnership in education for 2030 agenda for sustainable development in ASEAN. Of course, uh, this is huge political commitment from ASEAN leaders on the importance of the ESD. At the national level, ESD has been integrated and embedded in the 2013 National Curriculum of Education in the lifelong learning perspective. At the school level, every school receives operational funds from the, from the government that can support ESD implementations. On learning environment, we have been mainstreaming sustainable lifestyle as a school culture by Adiviata Green School Program, which has been launched since 2006 and collaborates with UNESCO Associated School Network. This program is an action of the Indonesian government to award 
school succeeded in implementing environmental care and sustainable culture movement at the school level. This is a multi-sectoral collaboration among line ministry, especially Ministry of Environment and Forestry and Ministry of Education, Culture, Research, Technology. The award has three levels of acknowledgement, local, provincial, and national levels. Up to now, more than 4,000 schools at the primary and secondary have received the award at the national levels. For building capacities for educators, Indonesia with more than 3 million teachers put youth investment to provide capacity development opportunities for educators by integrating ESD into several continuous professional development for in the uh, in, in the service uh, in, in in for in service educators also peer to peer learning about ESD has been carrying out regularly for educators through the ISP net program for empowering and mobilizing youth uh, again thanks to the ministry of environment and forestry who has launched environmental generation development for youth as an important priority area of ESD. ESD also has been integrated and embedded in the Boy Scout program. To empower local communities as nodal platform for all priority action areas, Adiviata School encourages students to actively participate in community services as a project-based learning and making them as an agent of change in the community. At the university level, student-led community services is compulsory as part of higher education curriculum in Indonesia. We also disseminating the important ESD in the UNESCO Global Network Learning Cities and UNESCO Creative Cities Networks to cities district and municipalities across the Indonesia. Next slide, please. Uh, please allow me to share some key takeaways from current implementation in Indonesia. What are the lessons learned? First, teaching and learning environment, curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment is the most important element to holistically implement ESD in a school. Our experience shows that students will enjoy and easily engage to learning through project-based learning beyond the school walls to learn what they live and live what they learn. They also like to experience transdisciplinary subject meeting their passion. Of course, this is important to equip learners to be able to fully understand the interrelation between economy, society and environment. And second, a close collaboration between light ministry, especially ministry environment and forest and forestry is extremely important. On the challenges, there is three challenges that we have. First, how to maintain sustainability performance in the Adiviata Green School. Uh, second, there are wide diversity of quality teachers, schools, and support from local governments. And the third, involvement of stakeholders is still minimum, especially from private sectors and industry. On the way forward, first, we will develop Indonesia National Agenda for ESG 2030, based on the Berlin declarations that we have agreed on last week. Second, we need to initiate public-private partnership in development ESG. And finally, we encourage UNESCO to be a catalyst to enhance networking and collaboration at the international and regional level in mainstreaming ESG and broadening the membership of ASP.NET. COVID-19 is a blessing in disguise. Learners now become aware on the importance of healthy environment, well-being, and sustainable living. Of course, this is a huge momentum for us to put ESD 
into action. Thank you very much. Amazing. You still have a 13 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Yoshiaki Ishida, and uh, my respect, Ms. Tana, the presenter, you. for your excellent presentation, both of you. Such a limited time. Arigatou gozaimasu. And the terima kasih banyak. Terima kasih. Okay, dear Sayaka, would you convey the, any questions from audiences if we have? Yes, Minyan. Um, we have three questions right now. Mm -hmm. Um, are we doing good? So, dear uh, dear panels, Mr. Ishida and uh, Papa. Yeah. Ananto Seta, please be there because okay, we uh, have uh, questions. I'm okay, ready. Sayaka, would you uh, repeat the, the questions, okay, so, please? Um, mm. Two questions are from Mr. Philip Pernell from Simeo Inotech. One mm -hmm. is to Mr. Ishida and one is to Mr. Anandoksima Cheta. Okay, let's so go for in the order. For, yes, so first one for Japan. In the Japanese ESD implementation plan, does the pillar and transforming learning environment include enhancing the social emotional learning SEL environment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is in, um, promoting a learning environment which facilitates uh, mutual trust, empathy, respect for diversity, positive interpersonal relationship, etc. Given social emotional skills development, it's such an important part of ESD for 2030. And the question to Mr. Dr. Ananto Kusumaseta, in the Indonesian ESD plan on the pillar on empowering and mobilizing youth, how is Ministry of Education engaging out of school youth enrolled in your non-formal education equivalency programs, for example, packet ABC, given they're outside of the formal school system? Mm hmm Okay, uh, Mr. Ishida. Ishida Sensei, maybe you go first. Thank you very much for the question. So I I, I think so uh, so the um, question is very reason uh we, we have a reason. So we think SEL is a very important part of the education. Uh, but we uh, you, you you do not see the what of SEL in the uh, ESD implementation program. But this uh, does not mean Japan is not uh, taking importance to the uh, SEL uh, as a ESD. Uh, so it's completely opposite. So, so we, we Japanese, our Japanese Ministry of Education is uh, SEL is very uh, core uh, component competency of the SDGs. So mm -hmm. we do not uh, mention on the implementation program, but when we say ESD, uh, so it uh, SE, SDL is uh, always included in the e, uh, ESD. So, so I, I hope this is the uh, answer to that question. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Papa Kanato. <clears throat> Thank you for the good question. Uh, uh, education for sustainable development is not for the uh, formal school, but also non-formal and informal school, including the out of school uh, children. The government, uh, thinks uh, since a long time ago, have a program called package A, B, and C, and now, uh, become more and more important when the government of Indonesia stretching the vocational education as a backbone to create the future skills uh, youth. So marrying between the uh, vocational into the broad-based uh, society education is very, very important. And this is part of the lifelong uh, learning that we are and now uh, putting uh, more emphasis on that. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Mi Young, you're muted. All right. Uh, if I may add some uh, some of my observation on ESD in Japan and the Indonesia, their intersectoral cooperation is very significant. For instance. Uh, between Minister of Education and the Minister of uh, Environment. So uh, that kind of uh, you might uh, consider. Thank you so much for your answers, both of the uh, uh, panel. Um, Mion, there's yes, so please. many answers coming in right now. <laughs> <laughs> really? So uh, Ma uh, Mark, do, do we still have a time to have uh, some more? Uh, it's up to I, you. <laughs> yeah, no, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think maybe From, we can move on. Move on. Yeah, do. I think so. Can, can yeah. I invite, uh, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Ishida and Mr. Anant Ananto to, uh, you can respond directly to those mm. questions in the chat box or in the Q&A box. If you can just yeah. write a few words directly in there to respond to that uh, yeah. and to anything that comes to the chat, that would be much appreciated. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, uh, Mark, for your guidance. So uh, all of the participants, if you have uh, uh, some more questions, just uh, leave them into the chat box for the question and answers. And uh, uh, the, the Mr. Ishida and uh, Dr. Ananto will uh, write in the responding all of it. So. Please uh, let me close this session and uh, thank you so much uh, for all of your attentions and uh, the, such a high and a strong interest in this one. So, dear Mark, please let me turn over to uh, turn over the floor to you, please. Thank you very thank much. You. Me. Thank you, Miyoung. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to Dr. Nanto and uh, Mr. Ishida from Japan and Indonesia. Uh, much appreciated for their interventions. Thank you. So next, let's move on. Uh, I, I appreciate their excellent uh, presentations because they've highlighted a lot of what uh, I'm going to talk about next in this ESD for 2030, a roadmap. Uh, this, uh, we can move to the next slide, please. Um, this uh, presentation will go through um, what is going to be expected for ESD for 2030? And of course, we know uh, all of us are, are well aware that the foundation for this is SDG uh, target 4.7, which aims to ensure that all our learners acquire the knowledge, skills, uh, competencies, values, attitudes, et cetera, to promote sustainable development and through all sorts of different kinds of initiatives and very much appreciated the the examples that were given by our colleagues in Japan and Indonesia on how to do this. Next slide. The guide for this ESD for 2030 was launched last year, titled Education for Sustainable Development, a roadmap. Um, launched late last year and then again, recommitted to last week at the World Conference on ESD uh, in Berlin. Uh, and so the goal, of course, is to build a more just and sustainable world. And here the objective is to fully integrate ESD into and all the 17 SDGs into policies, learning environments, uh, through educators, through youth, and through local communities to really push forward this ESD agenda. Next slide. As I mentioned, the prime, there's five primary goals, right? We want to strengthen uh, education policies, not just education policies, but other policies that would relate to sustainable development. So this involves collaborating with other ministries, for example, Ministry of Environment or Ministry of Sciences, uh, to ensure that sustainable development policies are well articulated and enacted. Uh, I, we appreciate the question from, from the, the floor on the learning environments and how do we in, properly uh, effectively develop learning environments. These are key uh, to ensure that our, our learners are well equipped and educators building the capacity so that they can foster societal transformation. This is key. Making sure that our teacher training institutes are well uh, supported uh, in order to develop a, a key cadre of teachers moving forward in ESD. The last two, of course, youth uh, we must mobilize and engage our youth. Uh, they are 
crucial and key components uh, to promote ESD in, in the future. And lastly, how do we engage not just our, our education stakeholders, but the communities, uh, people in cities, in, in rural areas, small villages, uh, from, from young and old. This is a lifelong learning opportunity uh, to engage all community members in ESD. Next. So as I mentioned before, key feature number one of the ESD for 2030 roadmap is the emphasis on all 17 SDGs, not just on that one particular target SDG 4.7, but how can we put all 17 goals within that SDG 4.7 and promote ESD uh, to achieve all SDGs? Next. The second feature focusing on a, a big transformation. Uh, large structural changes may need to be may need to happen. So how do we transform? change these and look to add and support any technological advances that are happening in the future. ESD has to in incorporate and encapsulate all of these uh, changes in order for us to make this transformation. Next. The last one and the final one and the one that we want to emphasize today is the leadership from our member states. And that's why we're going to hear in a moment about country, the country initiatives, the ESD for 2030 country initiatives. Uh, this needs to be led and owned uh, by our member states. And we want them to be the key, key stakeholders and the key people engaged to, in order to achieve these five priority action areas. Next. Just a reminder there, as you can see, and we already heard from Japan and Indonesia on what exactly these priority action areas are, and we'll be repeating this throughout throughout today, and, and we'll communicate with you again in the future. But these are the areas that we want to focus on policy, learning environments, building capacity of educators, empowering youth, and accelerating local level actions. Just a reminder, my colleague Nini mentioned off the top, and uh, uh, probably a lot of us who are in attendance today uh, participated or were a part of the World Conference on ESD, which was held last, last week. The outcome of this, of course, was a, a strong commitment called the Berlin Declaration, a commitment from over 80 ministers across the globe. Uh, and there are two, over 2,000 people participated in this event last year, all committing to promote ESD for 2030, highlighting that ESD is foundational element for education systems, uh, including with environment and climate action, need to be incorporated as core components in our education curriculum. The declaration, uh, which we're happy to share with you if you haven't received a copy yet, outlines a range of policies to transform uh, these learning environments, learning, teaching and learning and professional development uh, to achieve these five priority action areas. Uh, and highlights as, uh, our, one of the questions highlighted earlier, it highlights the need for ESD to, to have a strong emphasis, not only on cognitive skills, but also social and emotional learning and these behavioral comp competencies, these action competencies, so we can truly have uh, agents of change. Last. Okay, so as I transition to the next panel session, we're going to hear about country initiatives on ESD for 2030 and, and what we want uh, people to what we want countries to be able to do. Uh, so these should build, these country initiatives should build on existing prior ESD efforts. So as already mentioned from Japan and Indonesia, they've, they've done some activities and they're pushing forward with more. So we want to build ongoing efforts on ESD and look at ways of creating new. It's very important that we have multiple stakeholders involved. This he will be led at the, at the country level, hopefully by the Ministry of Education or, or national entity uh, in, on education, but has to involve all people from different sustainable de development sectors. There is a country initiative template, uh, which we have shared previously to all of our member states, and we can certainly follow up with you on that if you still have any questions. Uh, 
I think I'll stop uh, there for now. Uh, we'll, I'll provide a bit more uh, details following the panel session on how to move forward if countries haven't started yet. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll, uh, I'll introduce quick, very quickly for the next panel session. Uh, I'd like to welcome our moderator, uh, Ms. Yoko Mochizuki, who is an uh, education specialist at the UNESCO Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Education for Peace and Sustainable Development uh, in New Delhi, India. Uh, Yoko will be introducing, we have three panelists from Kyrgyzstan, Maldives, and Mongolia. Uh, and we're, we're very excited to hear a little bit about what they are planning to do for these country initiatives on ESD for 2030. With that, uh, I'll stop there and ask Yoko to take the floor. Yoko. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, welcome. Thank you very much, Mark. Uh, um, this is the second panel focusing on country initiatives. Uh, we have three speakers uh, from Kyrgyzstan, Maldives, and Mongolia. Um, I'm, my name is Yoko Mochizuki. I'm, uh, from, I'm, I'm a head of policy at UNESCO MGIP based in New Delhi. Uh, and it's a pleasure to invite the first speaker, uh, Ms. Zoya Pak, Chief Specialist of the Department of School Extracurricular and Supplementary Education uh, from the Ministry of Education and Science, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Ms. Zoya Pak, the floor is yours. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Zoya Pak uh, is with us. Um, yes, she was with us earlier. Yes. Um, uh, yeah. Ms. Pak, are, are you with us? Uh, I see we have a, 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 a from one of our colleagues saying that she's having technical okay. uh, difficulties connecting. So maybe shall we move on to the other sure. speakers and try and come back to Ms. Pak? to see if she can get connected? Yes, sure. So, uh, uh, Dr. Rashid, uh, can I invite you to present first? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so I would like to give the floor to Dr. Abdura Rashid Ahmed, Head of National Institute for Education and the Minister of State for Education from Maldives. Dr. Rashid. Thank you, Ms. Yoko. Thank you, uh, our colleagues from UNESCO Bangkok for giving this opportunity uh, to present our ESD. And also, uh, uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone uh, in this regional forum of Asia Pacific region. Uh, let me present the country initiatives of Maldives regarding EST. Um, we are working towards achieving education for sustainable development goals 2030 through following initiatives. The first one is uh, in our local language, we called Fehi Madarusa, meaning that green schools, trying to establish green schools. And second one is curriculum integration. And next is capacity building of educators and the fourth initiative is developing school Tibet and developing 21st century skills. Uh, and last one is uh, integrating ICT in education. So I will look at uh, these initiatives in bit details. The first one, uh, we are planning to develop national ESD policy. So this will be based on uh, ESD policy will be based on Education Act of the Maldives that makes ESD as a legal requirement. So with the uh, new Maldives Education Act, legally 
we have to follow the uh, ESD. So now it is mandatory. And also uh, when we are developing the uh, ESD policy, we will follow Berlin Declaration. And uh, we all know that recently it has been uh, decided by the member countries. A apart from this, education uh, sector plan of the Maldives and government strategic action plan also promotes uh, education for sustainable development. At first, I look at a bit detail on uh, Fehi Madarsa or Green School. So this is environmentally friendly school framework. We are now planning uh, to start this in collaboration with UNESCO and also get some assistance from UNICEF as well. Our Fehi Madarsa project, as you can see, uh, we have three uh, objectives. These objectives are reduce environmental footprint, reduce one's environmental impact, including energy, waste, water and waste. Focus on single use plastic in line with government's phase out plan. And the second objective is increase eco-literacy. So school community members to demonstrate environmental and sustainable literacy. Focus on ocean steward stewardship, considering the unique geography of Maldives. And next one is uh, climate prosperity. Uh, prepare students for a low carbon future that also provides economic prosperity. Focus on nurturing resilient, innovative generation. As the pillars of Fehi Madarsa or Green Schools, we have taken waste, ocean, island, and innovation. So those are the pillars, and these are the objectives of our Green School Initiative. And this is a whole school approach. And uh, this, as you can see, uh, lesson plans, all subjects at all grade levels to include of lessons where the topic in connected to sustainability and environmental stewardship. So uh, this is educational program and also whole school activities, various events, activities, policies organized at the school to encourage positive change towards sustainability. And community involvement is there through PTA, school board, and other NGOs will be a part of our Green School project. So that is why you can see community involvement and educational programs. And school operation also will be in line uh, with ESD concepts. And each school, which, which, which is going to adopt the school as a, a Fehi Madarusa Green School, they will have a Fehi team, which comes up with an informed action plan. So they will be working to implement the action plan. In this action plan, uh, I, I have mentioned the objectives. So each and every uh, action plans, they will be focusing these pillars, waste, ocean, island and innovation, then they will try to achieve these objectives, reduce eco footprint, eco literacy and climate change. So that's all about the uh, Green School and other, our other initiatives include in introducing school Tibet, school technical vocational education, and also developing 21st century skills and integrating ICT in education. So let me look at a bit detail in these initiatives as well. Developing skills, competencies as values of ESD, uh, we, we will integrate ESD in the national curricula. Uh, integrating ESD in the syllabus and textbooks, currently in the Maldives, we are revising our curriculum and revising textbooks and teacher's guide. So we are in the right time to incorporate and integrate ESD concepts in our national curriculum. And also, oh, we are going to introduce school Tibet for all the students there. All the students from uh, kindergarten 
to grade 10 uh, as a program uh, we will be providing this opportunity for the, the, the students. And another initiative we are planning is introducing 21st century skills as a special program. Of course, 21st century is a part of curriculum, but to give much more emphasis on 21st century, developing 21st century skills, this will come as a separate program. And uh, as other member countries mentioned, the transforming pedagogy is very important. So we also will uh, transform pedagogy in order to in in integrate more hands on, more project based teaching learning process to in, in, in integrate ESD. And it, currently we are, we are making I, ICT master plan in education. This is in collaboration with UNESCO Bangkok. And next capacity building of teachers and communities. Uh, we will conduct webinars and training sessions uh, to achieve this goal. We, we will do capacity building of teachers, uh, make them understand how to teach uh, in the, by integrating education for sustainable development concepts. And also we will uh, do the awareness for the community regarding education for sustainable development. Uh, in National Institute of Education, we have a non-formal education department. So non-formal education department has a mandate to educate community and youth. So through this wing of NIE, we will do, we will conduct this program. So uh, that's all about uh, country initiative uh, in Maldives. Once again, let me thank you, or UNESCO, especially UNESCO Bangkok, for giving this opportunity to Maldives uh, to present our country initiatives. In this moment, I, I would like to thank uh, MDIP, uh, UNESCO Regional Office Delhi, and also UNESCO Bangkok for providing uh, assistance in our Fehi Madarsa or Green School project. Uh, currently, we are uh, getting ready uh, to implement this project. We are uh, developing the framework and action plan. Uh, the work is going on. I wish everyone a very good day, very safe day. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rashid. Um, we at UNESCO MJP uh, have had a pleasure of working with uh, the government of Maldives on various initiatives. Uh, UNESCO MJP focuses on social emotional learning and uh, digital pedagogy to uh, transform education systems. And uh, I believe uh, today we are having a launch of uh, MJP's digital teacher course uh, in the Maldives. And we look forward to working with you closely in the coming years. Um, so uh, next, uh, shall I go to the third speaker or is uh, Ms. Soya Pak uh, with us now? I think uh, I think I'll go to the speaker from Mongolia first. Yes, I think yes. I think that's suitable, Yoko. Please go okay. ahead with the Mongolia okay. first. It looks like Zoya is still having some trouble connecting. Okay, so now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Niam Okil, Okil, head of Department of Primary and Secondary Education, uh, Ministry of Education and Science, uh, Mongolia. The floor is yours. Hello, uh, I'll be the translator for Mr. Niamachir today. Uh, shall we share the contents, um, the uh, PowerPoint we prepared? Uh, can you see our um, PowerPoint? Yes. PowerPoint, uh, Mongols or Sat, Oil of Duro on us, Doctor Dowski, which Sanak, what does she do that was a theme at the art of the age? The Hilmer name on us, Sari Hook, the Stum Stagas, Yagimu, and Snake him just his two child, poor with a standard, as Doctor Dowski, which is an outstanding Hunsky to such a dog, his two chess he took there. The Atonga Hilmaranta on us, Doctor Dowski, but of the Bita soon, but of the Sleek in the church. Because of the 
um, thank you and good afternoon, everyone, and the honored guests and uh, those who are all involved in today's session. Uh, as from Mongolia in 2004, for um, it, the Sustainable Development Goals and the Education for Sustainable Development, the first attempts and the ideas were made in 2004. Later in 2008, with the help of the Swiss Development Agency and National Policy, um, was beginning to drawn up to be uh, further implemented. And in 2015, a separate project for education for sustainable development was initiated uh, on all levels of uh, education uh, curriculum on, on primary, uh, uh, secondary and higher education as well. And in, in 2020, the second stage of the very same program um, has been uh, started to implement and the goal of it is to strengthen what we had already achieved and move forward to, to the successful implementation of the education for sustainable development. Замын <laughs> Um, Mongolia has uh, expanded and deepened its information through 11 sets of resources specifically selected to develop the uh, five education for sustainable development 2030 roadmap um, priorities and six framework for action to implement them. We have organized a nationwide event called Joint Initiative Partnership for Education for Sustainable Development, which includes all the national tele, uh, television um, uh, outlets, uh, social um, digital platforms to for this unified uh, action uh, to identify initiatives and strengthen the cooperation. <laughs> as for the action priority one in terms of advancing policy, Mongolia's education policy is defined as providing equal opportunities and support for all citizens to receive equal access to lifelong learning and quality education. Mongolia's long and medium term development policy documents and some legal acts have been have the advantage of being coherent, according to the education, um, uh, education for sustainable development concept document analysis report. And on this report, the various stakeholders have been included, such as the uh, donor agents, um, donor agents of uh, Asian Development Bank, World Bank and other non governmental international organizations have placed their inputs and based on their reports uh, and based on the uh, joint works, we have created this policy document. So, um, so it can be said that these have the advantage of being quite coherent. Hyper, <laughs> 
одоо анхаарах стандарт байна л гэж байгаа. Ялангуяа яаж суралцсан хаагуулга түүний хизм шүүс гарах зүйн ямар байх ёстой. За энэ үйл ажиллагааны нэг хүч төрөлд тусан материалыг орчин нөхцөлийг яаж мэдүүлэх юм, суралцын байгууллагын менежмент шийдвэр гаргах дээр яаж илүү их тийм бас сургууль болох юм бэ гэдэг чинь зөв бол бид анхаарах ажиллагаа хоёрдугаар зурулаар ажиллаж байгаа. Хоёрдугаар чиглэлээ. And as well on the first action priority one, uh, the goals have been set and the, in terms of policy have been quite coherent. So moving forward, we need to focus on how to implement this successfully and sustainably implement these ideas. So for example, changing for sustainable development, there needs to be a, a knowledge and tools to implement education for sustainable development, motivation for it, and determination and courageous conversion for education for sustainable development. Moreover, aligning the training institutions as a whole with the principles of sustainable development, learning content and teaching methods needs to be improved, material learning environment and the action plan of the government of Mongolia for 2020 2024 and 24 has been uh, has adopted this uh, plan for education for sustainable development and lastly there's a training institution management decision making needs to uh, improve for for the transformation of uh, learning environments за гуравдугаар үйлсэн чиглэлийн хүрээнд бидэж одоо сурган хүмүүжүүд багш нарыг чадхчих асуудлууд нь ялгамжсан асуудлаа ялангуяа тогтоо хүчтэй одоо боловсролын мөдөл санааг цаашаа авч явах гэдэг нь багш нарыг чанарч болох чадвартай багш нарыг одоо энэ чиглэлийн мэдлэг чадвартай багш нарыг мэдлэг чиглэлд бол илүү их анхаарах юм одоо хэрэгцээ шаардлагатай байгаа гэж бас их харж байгаа тэгээ ялангуяа ихтэй сургуулийн ихтэй сургуулийн багш нарыг бэлтгэх татвар бэлтгэх сургалтын хөтөлбөрт бол тогтвортой хүчлийн үзэл санааг тогтвортой одоо үзэл санааг тусгах за чадхгүй хөгжүүлэх чиглэлээр тийм системтэй өргөн хүрээ хамрсны цогц бодлого оруулж ирэх хэрэгтэй гэж багш бэлтгэх тогтвортой заноос нь хэлж харж байгаа за мэдээж одоо яг бэлтгэдэг гараад ирсэн багш нарыг бол цаашаас чадхчуулах тэдний санаачлалын юм одоо илүү өрнүүлэх за гаргаж байгаа хамжилт тулгарч байгаа бэрхшээлийн сонсох за өдөр тутмын үйл ажиллагаанда энэ ашигладаг болохыг одоо болохыг одоо бусад үйл ажиллагаатай интеграцилж системтэй гэр ингээл уншуулан дэмжих үйл ажиллагаа хэрэгтэй байна гэж ингэж харж байгаа. Тэгэхээр зөвхөн доктортой хөгжлийн боловсрол их бүгээр доктортой гэж хөгжил гэж юу юм, доктортой хөгжлийн зорилт гэж юу юм гэдэг ингэж бүх талаар нь системтэй интеграцилж чадах юм хэрэгтэй шаардлага байна гэж одоо гуравдугаар чиглэлийн хүрээнд үйл ажиллагаа хэлж байна. And in terms of action priority 3 the building capacity of educators are key focus um for for the successful implementation for example to systematically and comprehensively integrate education for sustainable development ideas into capacity building retaining and curricular and education assessments and implement capacity building activities in a systematic and more comprehensive manner moreover uh, systematically provide and encourage opportunities for continuous development by integrating uh, ESD for into day-to-day training pr- uh, practices by empowering teachers listening to them helping and collaborating on their initiatives and successes so it, it really comes after firstly to train these um, teachers to have quality of, uh, of teachers in terms of education for sustainable development and then not only stopping there but working with them listening to them empowering them and uh, listening for their initiatives to have a more nationwide uh, full framework за дөрөвдөр чиглэлийн хүрээнд бол юм гэж хамгийн гол асуудал бол энэ байгаа яа шинэ баян залуучуудын манлайлын залуучуудын сайн дурын хөтөлбөрүүдийг бол илүү өргөн хүрээгээр дэмжиж нэг оролцоо хангаж ерөөсөө энэ өөрчлөлтийн гол одоо залуудах чин бид юм аа гэдэг итгүүлэх тэгээд мэдлэг чадвартай үзэл бодол үнцүүл хандлагын тусламжтайгаа тэдний бод чиглүүлж ажиллах та тэгээд энэ чиглэл рүү бол бүр тусгайсан нэмэлт хөтөлбөрүүд нэмэлт үйл ажиллагаанууд бол хэрэгтэй юм байна гэдэг ингэж харж байгаа. Тэгэхээр энэ бол цаашдын юм одоо бид нэг гол байрч явах зүйл энэ дөрөвдөр үнсэн чиглэл юм байна гэж үтэн тушаарч байгаа. And perhaps one of the most important areas is the uh, action priority for empowering and mobilizing youth. Uh, is it is crucially important with um by um creating with the ability to navigate sustainable future changes uniting the with the help of knowledge skills views values and attitudes youth led youth centered groups and with f- support is vitally important and recognizing young people as the key players and contributors is it's it's moving forward and even today and moving forward it's uh, utmost importance we need to create this belief that the the youth needs to take uh, uh, decisive actions and we need to help them uh, create the environment by empowering them, empowering the youth to create um, more sustainable development in, in the education sector. The Хавтах чиглэлийн гол асуудал бол мэдээж орнотхын төвшөнд бүх байгууллагын төвшөнд болон тогтвортой хөгжлийн 
одоо тэр үйл ажиллагааг хурцах асуудал байгаа. Тэгэхээр орон нутгийн төвшөнд хамгийн гол нь ихдээ явд ямар ямар ажлууд дээр төвлөрч ажиллах байгаа гэдэг үг одоо тэр зорилгоч хийлээ бид нар нэлээд тодорхойлохгүй болж байгаа. Жишээлбэл тухайн хүмүүсийн ганцлаг давуу тал үнд зүйлтэнд цолгуулсан юм сургалтуудыг явуулах тэг их хамрын сургалт ялгаатай хэрэгцээг нь тодорхойлж тэр бүх хүмүүстэй тохирсон сургалтын орчинд төгийг бүгдүүлэх бүх төвшөнд энэ хүний нөөцийг бэлтгэх мэсэн туштаас хурцах бодлогын хэрэгжүүлэх тэгээд сургалтын цахим хаалт орныг орон зай цаг хугацаас үл хамаараад ашиглах гэдэг ингээд хэрвүүлэх чиглүүдийн тодорхойлж үе шин чиглсэн бодлого чиглүүдийг орон зай санд болгож байгаа and in action a priority of five accelerating local level actions and it really comes down to identifying mongolian characters strengths and values uh furthermore in the ruler uh, areas we need to um, really focus on what is needed what actions needs to be taken and within that to have this inclusive education uh, as it takes a different needs in education as well to uh, attend to um the inclusive uh, and equal access to education in rural areas is hu- vitally important uh human re- preparing human resources at all levels of education and lifelong learning are, are really um crucial parts in in developing accelerating this uh effort in rural areas and through development of e-learning platforms and digital transformation this can be achieved За тэгээд төгсгөлт нь бол яг энэ тогтвортой өвчлийн боловсролын үзэл санаа хэлбэл хэрэгжлийн хаа үндэсний төвшиц байгуулга Монгол улс бол сонгосон. Тэгэхээр үндэсний төвшиц байгуулга цагаа тулгуулаад үйл ажиллагаа хаалгална. Тэгээд энэ нь батлагдан гарсан тогтвортой өвчлийн үзэл санааг шингээсэн нуртур тунд хугацааны бодлогын байрлалчуудыг хэрэгжүүлэх их зүйн орчныг хөдөлгөх үүднээс боловсролын хуулиар шинчилж одоо улсын хурлаар өргөн байх энэ ажлуудыг хийгчээр тэгэхээр хамгийн гол нь бид нар орын хугацааны одоо 240 он хүртэл бодлого бол хэрэгжилтэн дээр илүү одоо акцент өгч ингэж ажиллах юм аа гэж үзэж бодож байгаа. Тэгээд анхаарал амьдсан тав нь байлаа. And of course so lastly the based on the medium term policy and legal documents in the field of education and the sustainable um, development um, to create a favorable legal environment we're preparing and developing a um uh, education package and we're submitting it to the government of Mongolia to be passed and it includes gender equality policies and impl- and and moving forward the implementation of the education um what well, what Mongolia is focusing on moving forward for the next 10 years is uh, since we have um successfully created the policy documents and legal um favorable legal environments it is important to focus on the implementations the sustainable implementation Uh, moving forward so thank you for your attention thank you very much um so now uh we like to go to uh, uh q a take some questions from the floor uh sayaka san do you have uh some questions uh directed to either mongolia or maldives Yes, uh, thank you, Yoko. There are several questions coming in. Um, let me start from this one. Um, teacher education, both pre and in service, is key factor for ESD for 2030. How can we provide motivation and technical support for them, especially in the context of low budget? This is to the both Maldives and Mongolian speakers. Thank you, Sayaka-san. So, uh, Dr. Rashid, uh, would you like to respond to this question? Who's made all of this happen? And I now want to invite... Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ayoko, and thanks for the question. I, I, I can say it's a very good question. Actually, uh, the school leadership and the school management and, the gov- and leadership in the government, especially in Ministry of Education, has a role to motivate the teachers uh, to develop themselves because the quality of teach- teaching will never go beyond the quality of teachers. Therefore, when teachers complete uh, this type of training uh, courses, we should recognize uh, their work like giving certificate of participation, certificate of appreciation, and also uh, the number of uh, professional development courses Uh, they complete so these hours can be accumulated and once uh, they they complete particular number of professional development courses a uh, s- certain type of recognition uh, can uh, motivate so uh, that's what i can uh, say regarding this question thank you 
thank you. Thank you again for that question. Um, thank you, Yoko. Uh, Mr. Niem, uh, Director Niemocher has just been called to the minister right now, so he had to leave, but uh, uh, I'll continue on his behalf. Um, and thank you for the question. It is a very important question of, and as we have mentioned, the training of teachers and the quality of teachers and moving forward and how to empower them, it is, it is a topic that needs a lot more discussion. And for Mongolia, we, we are working closely with UNESCO. Um, very soon, we are also try, working for, for the summer, we're working to uh, have this numerous workshops that would give out certificates that would prepare teachers on the education system of development, this, uh, the, the ideas to understand and how to, how to, how to prepare these teachers. And once, uh, once we have qualified teachers, I think it, we can move forward. Those teachers can, from the ministry side, we can, uh, we can do all kinds of um, uh, activities, uh, empowering them uh, through different ways. And, through either it be a, through a digital um, transformation or through it be a certificate um, or through be just helping to uh, help these teachers to initiate, to be the initiated initiators to help, help create and empower the youth. Um, so that, that can be uh, our answer. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have time for one more question or uh, Mark? Um, uh, maybe not, <laughs> sorry, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you to, to the two panelists. I wish we had more time, but um, there are questions. If there are questions, please look at the Q&A uh, and feel free to try and respond to them directly or, or directly from the chat. Uh, th thank you. Thank you. So now I'd like to close uh, the second panel and give the floor to Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rashid and, uh, and Mr. Aniam Okio from Mongolia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yoko. Uh, well done. And thank you again to Dr. Abdullah Rashid and Mr. Niam Ochir and, and the colleague uh, for doing the translation. Thank you very much uh, for your interventions. We, we truly appreciate it. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. Uh, our, our, our friends from Kyrgyzstan were, were unable to connect uh, for some reason today, uh, unfortunately, uh, and we didn't have a chance to hear from them. Um, my, our colleague, uh, UNESCO colleague, Aisulu, I, I don't know if you, have you been, able, would you like to uh, join the floor and say a few words uh, in from, from what's happening in Kyrgyzstan? Yes. Um, hello, colleagues. Um, hi, Mark. Um, I don't know what happened. Our colleagues at the Ministry of Education tried to connect uh, through different uh, devices. I even shared my uh, connection link with them, but uh, it didn't help. But uh, what I can tell um, from uh, on behalf of uh, Kyrgyzstan uh, is that we were um, uh, we are implementing um, some easy activities um, mainly um, uh, currently in, in the coming months uh, uh, focused on uh, capacity uh, building of teachers in ESD. Uh, so that's uh, the components of the the roadmap. Uh, also, um, uh, uh, a lot is being done on the on the development of uh, relevant content. Um, uh, plus, uh, you know, with support with support of UNESCO, but also uh, at the level of uh, teacher in service uh, training. Um, I have to say uh, as well that with uh, the support of other development partners, namely JZ, um, there are some in initiatives being implemented at the teacher um, pre-service training level. Um, uh, also, uh, with um, the support of uh, um, uh, uh, Trust and Fund of uh, Japan, uh, we will be um, uh, helping uh, schools implement uh, some uh, local activities or actions towards um, uh, ESD um, and with focus on, on youth. So more or less, um, you know, ESD is covered uh, uh, by all the uh, components of the roadmap, including policy level. Um, it is part of um, 
um, uh, the education uh, sector uh, strategy 2040 uh, already. Uh, and uh, recently, a few months ago, um, with the decree of the president, uh, there was a, a new concept uh, for um, um, I think uh, moral and uh, physical development of uh, youth in schools, uh, and in that concept, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this concept actually covers some elements uh, uh, of um, uh, education, uh, which can be, uh, which actually uh, support uh, you know implementation of ESD things like tolerance, uh, critical thinking. Um, uh, you know, uh, peace, um, uh, intercultural, um, you know, tolerance, um, etc. So, um, in short, uh, I think uh, this is what I can tell for Kyrgyzstan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Aisulu. Uh, much appreciated. Sorry to put you on the spot for that, uh, but it, it really <laughs> is good to hear about some of the initiatives that are happening in Kyrgyzstan. And it was unfortunate that we didn't uh, have Ms. Ms. Pak today, but thank you for, for bringing that in. For the rest of the participants and panelists, I, Sulu uh, Sulemanova is uh, one of our UNESCO colleagues working directly in Kyrgyzstan. So thank you very much for that very quick update. Um, much appreciated. Now, uh, we're uh, moving right along through our program. So let's, uh, let's share. Uh, so that was uh, some excellent input from, from a few countries on what they're actually doing for this ESD for 2030 country initiatives. And as I mentioned earlier in, in today's uh, uh, session that <clears throat> there is a country initiative template. So I'll try and walk through uh, you know, this country initiative template and then what might be the next steps for countries to take. Uh, some countries have already started as you've heard, but if, if other countries have not yet started, this might give you some, some uh, suggestions on how to get started or ways to go. And of course, uh, the previous speakers and the previous countries that have spoken might have given you some ideas already. First off, the ESD country initiative template, uh, which was sent out uh, to, to all our member states uh, er earlier, uh, earlier this year or even late last year, uh, has several components in it. So number one, uh, we, we want some basic member state information and key would be identifying uh, focal point contacts for ESD for 2030 initiative. So this might be somebody who work, is working directly on education for sustainable development, either in the Ministry of Education, ideally in the Ministry of Education, but it might be somebody who's working on this through, through other ministries as well. And those key focal point contacts should be uh, added, uh, basic information, who they are, their positions, uh, and how we can contact them from UNESCO. Second in the country initiative template is asking countries to share background information on the priority areas. So as, as it exists today, what is your, what is your national priority on, for example, ESD policy, uh, learning environments, building capacity, and so on. And there's a, a small checkbox to, to indicate whether each one is uh, of high priority, low priority, and so on, uh, or it has been in the past, but maybe moving forward, you want to, to shift focus and priorities. As well as uh, there's a space to indicate what existing efforts and activities are being undertaken in each of those priority areas. Next in the template is uh, for you to outline your national vision and objectives. What is, it, what is it that you want to accomplish in this ESD for 2030 over the next year? coming years. And this vision and objectives, we recommend and strongly emphasize and suggest that this should be done through a consultative process. Uh, so we hope that you can gather national level stakeholders together in order to agree on your vision and objectives going forward. Also key is the governance section, who's going to be involved, how, who will be managing multiple stakeholders, across all those different priority areas uh, and what priority, when, who will be working on what in those priority areas. And the last, uh, last couple parts is, of course, listing 
in detail what are your current activities and what are your planned activities for the ESD for 2030 and indicating any sort of partnerships uh, that you want to try and establish or strengthen over the coming years. Next slide. So just walking through a suggested uh, way forward for countries to move this. Uh, remember, I, I emphasized that this should be a consultative process. So one way we envision that is to have a sort of national workshop or seminar bringing together education stakeholders to discuss the country initiative. In order to do that, you may want to do some sort of initial mapping of ESD initiatives in the countries. So some countries may have already done this, but those who have yet to start may want to think about how to do some sort of preparatory mapping to find out what existing initiatives are taking place. Then hold that preparatory workshop with, with local uh, stakeholders, key stakeholders from the Ministry of Education, teachers, even students, uh, uh, and other ministry officials, Ministry of Science, Ministry of Environment, NGOs would be crucial who are working in this capacity in, in ESD. Uh, bringing all of these stakeholders together would be a good start so you can have a good uh, discussion on how to move forward uh, on your country initiative and how to submit the country template. Remember, uh, part of the workshop might be actually presenting this country template uh, for inputs to all these stakeholders. Next slide. Once you've done that, once this consultative process is done, you've uh, engaged as many people as, as possible as you want, you can submit the country template and you can submit it to UNESCO. Uh, through the, the focal points that have been identified at the national level. Uh, we'd be happy to, to receive them. You can send them either to UNESCO Bangkok, a UNESCO field office uh, that you work with, or to UNESCO headquarters, uh, and we'll receive these country initiatives and provide any feedback, recommendations, and reach out to you on how we can uh, support or how we can help you move forward. Um, uh, our headquarters is working hard to develop an ESD network uh, of stakeholders. So this information on the country initiatives this, with the, the country contact focal points is a good starting point for you to be put on this list so that we can then engage uh, you with other countries around the region and around the globe. And then hopefully at some point you will launch your country initiative after you've had, uh, after you've finalized the country template or, or discussed with local partners and local stakeholders on what you want to accomplish. And you'd plan out the activities uh, going forward. Next. That's the immediate steps. And then this would be sort of over the coming years. Uh, we would aim to collaborate with you. So once uh, we have all your contact information, once we know what you're trying to do, then it's more about regional, global level, even national level collaborations uh, with UNESCO and with other actors and stakeholders. Uh, we try to work together as much as possible to promote our ESD for, for 2030 country initiatives and share information that is coming out of them as well. Uh, including in part of this, please uh, at the national level, try and identify ways at monitoring the progress in your country initiative. And then we would like to hear back every two years on what has been achieved, what has been done, and challenges, gaps, lessons learned, and so on, and how we can move forward as well. Next slide. So that uh, just highlights some of the implementation, uh, the ways of Im implementation that countries can take. Um, uh, there are, as I mentioned, there, there are efforts in, currently to develop the ESD network, a network of partners that can provide a platform for collaboration. Um, there are existing supporting uh, initiatives such as the UNESCO Japan Prize on ESD. This is a, a global level uh, engagement that can support our ESD initiatives. Uh, one way to, to promote further is promoting research on ESD initiatives. Maybe within your national country, uh, initiatives so you can look at how to, to research existing and emerging trends in, in ESD. 
mobilizing resources that can support this uh, through partnerships uh, and, and, and uh, working together with different partners, either nationally or re, uh, across the region uh, would be also a good way forward and monitoring our progress, as I mentioned before. Last slide, please. Those are just some of the key dates. Uh, we're already well into this. Uh, so the country, uh, the bilateral technical discussion, we've had uh, uh, some bilateral discussions between UNESCO and countries already uh, so to kickstart some of the countries on their way forward. If any countries do have questions about this, uh, we'd, we'd be happy to set up uh, further discussions uh, on how to, to move forward on the ESD for 2030 country initiatives. Uh, country level preparatory workshops. We know that some are already uh, underway, uh, already taking place or, or will take place soon. Uh, you can see country submits a country initiative plan. As I mentioned, some already have submitted their initiatives and yet we're still welcoming other uh, countries to submit their initiatives to us. The, e the World Conference on ESD took place uh, last year, or last year, last week. Uh, successfully, as, as we mentioned earlier, uh, and then our regional meeting uh, right now, as, as we're having today. Then, as follow-ups and, and to sustain our momentum, we will be having regional meetings on EST for 2030, hopefully in person uh, in 2022, uh, where countries, we can bring countries together uh, to talk about how they're progressing in their country initiatives. So look forward uh, later this year or early next year for more information on a regional meeting on ESD that will hopefully take place in person as we move out of our, our lockdowns and restrictions due to COVID-19. And then global ESD net meeting planned for 2023. With that, um, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, since we're moving a, a little bit late, if there's any questions or comments specifically on country initiatives, uh, Sayaka, if there was anything that you, you saw in the, in the chats or in the Q&A come up uh, that I might be able to address very quickly at this time, uh, I'd be happy to hear any of those questions. Thank you, Mark. Um, there's one question about uh, TOR for ESD National Coordinator or ESD Focal Point. Do we have such TOR or job description? Uh, we, we have a rough terms of reference. It, basically, this will be up to each individual member state. But what we were, are looking for is, uh, as a focal point, is somebody who works uh, directly in areas related to education for sustainable development. Uh, so we have asked our, our member states through our national commissions of, of UNESCO um, and the ministries of education to, to try and identify the, the suitable person who would be able to act as a focal point on education for sustainable development. In some countries, those people may have already been identified and nominated but for other countries and other member states, we'd be happy to have a quick discussion with you if you have questions on who exactly should be that focal point. Um, but just to give the general description is that somebody who, who, who works uh, and strongly uh, engages in education for sustainable development uh, at the national level. Any, anything, maybe one more, or if, um, if anything, Sayaka? Yeah. yeah. Um, another question about the, um, do you have any concept note, template, or guideline, including data management plan, <clears throat> and who to contact for that? Um, well, in general, we do have, uh, yes, a concept note and, and everything that was submitted with our country initiative template. Uh, so. I understand all the participants today may not have received it. That country, uh, concept note and country uh, initiative template was issued directly to our national commissions of UNESCO. Uh, so it wasn't made public. Uh, it was submitted directly to our national commissions of UNESCO who are usually at the ministries of education in our member states. So they are the people who have received it. Um, if 
uh, you would like to have more information uh, about a country initiative in your country, you can contact UNESCO and we can certainly uh, um, facilitate a, an, an engagement with our national commissions of UNESCO or, and the ESD focal point or the Ministry of Education in that particular country who is responsible for the country initiative template so that we can try to bring together all stakeholders and, and partners uh, that could uh, be uh, supporting, could be providing inputs, could be uh, engaged in the country initiatives. So please do reach out to either UNESCO, UNESCO Bangkok. Uh, we'll give you our, our uh, email address uh, at the end uh, to, to my, my email uh, as I, as I you know, uh, uh, provided in the concept note to this meeting or to any UNESCO field office that you work directly with. And we can certainly uh, bring together the, the right people so that we can move forward in the country initiative. Thank you. I realize there are a lot of questions. So, so with that, we do welcome any of the questions and comments in the chat box and Q&A. We'll take note of them and try to answer them for everybody. Uh, again, if you do have other questions, please send them to us by email. We'll try to respond to everybody who's provided some, some inputs or feedback today. Uh, thank you, Sayaka, for, for handling the Q&A part. Uh, and with that, um, We've, we've slightly gone over our, our, our intended schedule, but not too bad. And with that, I'd like to ask once again, uh, Nini Tong to close out today's session uh, with a few encouraging words and recommendations. Thank you. Nini. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Also, thank you for presenting the, the wait for what which outline what we all need to do together for coming coming months also. And then I would say that it is a, it was a very enriching discussion and also great to learn from the country experience on this area of EST also. So with this, may I make a, the closing remark for that this is very important that our regional events. So on behalf of the UNESCO Asia and the Pacific Regional Bureau for Education, it is my great pleasure to congratulate you all for the successful completion of this Asia and the Pacific Regional Technical Meeting on EST for 2030. So as the, the UN General Assembly recognized as EST is an integral element of the sustainable development goal on quality education and, and also a key enabler for all the other sustainable development goal. So all EST work mobilized action toward the achievement of the SDG and the raise the awareness, the action on the others the, 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 on the 17 goal in the education setting also. So therefore, we rely on the your country's strong leadership to build on going effort on ESD and the possibility create a new effort by addressing the five priority action area. It mentioned that the advancing policy, transforming learning environment, building capacity of educator, empowering and the mobilizing you and accelerating local level action. So these five action area to engage multi-stakeholder from both education and sustainable development sector and to advocate and mobilize the resource. So specifically, we call on you to implement the multi-stakeholder country initiated as Mark mentioned, his wait for work on the ESD for 2030 to harness partnership and collaboration to support education on the SDG, to promote research on emerging issue and trend on ESD, to mobilize resource to support ESD implementation and to monitor progress on ESD and country initiative on ESD for 2030. So using this opportunity, I would say we would like to thank Ms. Yoshi Haki Ishida for sharing with us the effort of promoting ESD having been made by Japan also. The financial support from the JFIT and the, 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 the active participation on the new ESD implementation framework are highly appreciated. We highly appreciate it. We also would like to thank Mr. Ira Anato Kusuma Sita for the sharing experience and practice on the ESD from Indonesia also. We also, also we are very glad to see the country initiative shared by the, the Ms. Mr. Nian Usha T, and also, I mean, excellent translation, translation uh, interpreter from Mongolia. We are also very glad to hear from Dr. Abdullah Rahid Ahmed that national EST policy will be developed and whole school approach will be applied in the Maldives. And also, of the Ms. Zoya Park from Kyrgyzstan, she couldn't make it, but I would like to thank our colleague, Me Asuko As Esulu, 
from Kyrgyzstan to briefly explaining their, their, their situation and their, their progress, the update on that also. Also, we also would like to thank our moderator as well. So we encourage all the other country to take the appropriate step to uh, develop your EST for 2030 country initiative. So we know that SANA already underway and for those of you who hasn't been yet, please do share your country initiative with UNESCO as every one of you is a crucial partner who enable us to achieve SDG 4.7 together. With this, I would like to once again thank you all for you know the country participation, other stakeholder, partner, interpreters, you know the, 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 I mean, our IQ team, our moderator for your active participation and engagement. And we look forward to seeing more concrete action at the country level. And UNESCO, we UNESCO are very happy to support you on the part of this ESD for 2030. So once again, thank you very much. And, and congratulations for this successful completion of this regional technical meeting. So with this, Mark, over to you. Thank you, Nini. Much appreciated, uh, as, as usual. Again, I'd like to echo the thanks uh, Nini just mentioned to all the speakers who joined us today from Japan, Indonesia, Maldives, Mongolia, uh, Kyrgyzstan, uh, to our panel, our moderators. Uh, thank you very much for stepping in, our colleagues behind the scenes. Thank you as well. Uh, there's been several questions regarding sharing of PowerPoint presentations and so on. We'll reach out and, and make sure with the panelists that they're okay to share these with, with the public. And if they are okay to share them, then we'll, we'll try to figure out a way that we can share with all the participants today. So uh, we'll do our best to make sure that this is shared. The meeting has been recorded. We'll also make, uh, try to find a way to, to uh, post this on, online on, a, on our website or something so you can re review it again later. Again, uh, we'll try to answer all of uh, the questions that have been put in, uh, please do reach out to us. Um, uh, once again, thank you very much. You can reach out to us there at that email address, esd.bgk at unesco.org for any questions related to the ESD for 2030 uh, country initiatives. Thank you, everyone. With that, we will close the session today. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.